I'll now turn you over to Roland, who's the product specialist from WooCloud, and he'll discuss how undetected IoT devices can access your IT assets. Roland? Fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction there, Joe. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Roland Feldmeyer, and as uh, Joe mentioned, I'm a product specialist here at WooCloud. So today we're going to cover quite a bit of um, technology, uh, things that you may not have considered before uh, for your environments, or even um, you know, understanding what might be happening out there in the world of uh, devices. So let's get into this. Um, really, the big problem that exists that uh, a lot of organizations either choose not to address or really aren't aware of is that there's this huge uh, growth of unmanaged devices that are entering into the workplace or into organizations on a daily basis. For everybody that's on this phone uh, conference, I will paint a profile of you and I'll probably get pretty close. And that is, you all probably have a smartphone, a smartwatch, a tablet, and probably a laptop of your own that you bring into the workplace each and every day. Some of those devices are going to be managed by the organization, such as your laptop. And what we mean by managed is it's a known device. It has um, some endpoint protection technology on it, whether it's antivirus or some sort of EDR technology. Um, but a vast majority of the other devices that are coming into the environment are those that are unmanaged and those would uh, be equivalent to your cell phone, to your smartwatch, um, and to your uh, tablets. And uh, roughly about 20% of these devices are truly at high risk, and more than 70% of these devices are unmanaged. So that means there's not the ability to uh, load any sort of antivirus on the system. They can't put any sort of endpoint protection solutions on there. Um, and because of this, you know, there's a, there's this challenge with, with the, um, devices entering and potentially, uh, causing harm inside of the environment. And one of the things that we've seen, um, out there is really this explosion of devices, um, that's entering the workplace. So, um, as I described before, many of you have a laptop or a desktop at work. That's a known device. It's managed. Um, and there's probably one for every employee um, at the company. When you take a look at this, let's just take a look at an organization that has about a thousand employees. That's roughly about a thousand PCs and, and some other equipment as well. But the moment we start bringing in as employees, all these other devices, we are now growing the attack surface um, in the environment by a factor of three to four times. Um, and when we take a look at the, the statistics out there, by the end of 2020, there are going to be over 25 billion uh, devices that enter into corporate environments on a daily basis. That's a significant amount of devices that are out there and poses a big challenge for, um, for IT because a lot of these devices are connecting to um, the, the company resources without really being sanctioned or um, having true permission to join them. It just happens to be you, you're friends with the guys in IT. They, you know, take your phone, they, they put on the credentials for the Wi-Fi access. And now all of a sudden your phone is accessing the, the Wi-Fi on the corporate network. Um, and then the other challenge that this presents is that the current security solutions that exist on the marketplace today really cannot scale to this number of devices or at the rate that these devices are being introduced into the environment into the environment. And so that's really the problem that we're trying to solve here at WooCloud is how do we deal with all of these um, managed and more importantly, unmanaged devices in the environment? And even more so, how do we see what's on our network or potentially hovering around the network? And Pay attention to that hovering around the network. We'll cover that in greater detail, um, but that's going to be a very important aspect to everything in our conversation today. So when we take a look at, you know, what these unsecured devices can potentially do in an environment or even these unmanaged devices, 
um, it can cause significant challenges. And if you take a look at the most recent Ponemon Institute uh, research, you know, the average cost of a breach today is about $3.9 million. Um, I don't know about you guys, but 3.9 is a pretty significant um, dollar value um, that I don't necessarily want to pay out of my budget. But let's get into something that's even more fun and really start getting into what the real benefits are of the WooCloud solution. We're going to get deeper into the details, but right now I'm going to start to introduce you to some of the key uh, concepts from a high level. And like I said, I'll expand on, on that in a little bit. Um, what we do um, when we get implemented in an organization is we actually have the ability um, without any agents, so that nothing gets installed on any of the endpoints or any of the devices, we merely see everything that, all the traffic that's on the network. Um, and then using our radio frequency sensors, we have to see, we have the ability to see what's hovering around the network. So that means, you know, things that are hovering around the network could be a cell phone that has come into your organization. Um, it's not connecting to an access point, but it does have its Wi-Fi enabled and it does have its Bluetooth enabled. Um, and you typically will not see that device on your network unless it truly connects. What we can do with our radio frequency sensors is we can actually pick up that cell phone and we can also see its Wi-Fi connectivity as well as, as well as its Bluetooth connectivity. So this really starts to allow us to see all devices that are in your environment. So everything that's connected to your network, either physically or via Wi-Fi or hovering around. And what we then start to do is we start to inspect the data packets that are flowing across the network. And we are gleaning uh, information from those data packets so that we can build what we call hyper context around every device that enters the environment. And we'll get even deeper into the definition of devices. Um, but for now, just understand anything that is in and around your network, we will see and we can start building a very robust profile of what that device is. And we're calling that profile a hyper context. And one of the things that we were, that we're able to do with our hyper context engine, it is an, an artificial intelligence and machine learning platform. And what it does is it actually starts to understand what every device is. So when I walk in with my cell phone, our hypercontext platform identifies my, my device as a smartphone. It knows the manufacturer and the model number. And along with that, because it's a smartphone, there are certain types of behaviors that that smartphone is supposed to have um, as it's communicating uh, with other devices. And when we start to see devices not behaving in the typical fashion that they should be, be behaving, that's when we start to really address um, and, and set alarms and, and then also set automation into place to, to uh, remediate the, the situation. So here's a great example. We were in at a customer facility just over a year ago. Um, we installed our, uh, our network appliance, we installed our radio frequency sensors, and we installed the software. And this, we started to um, see a lot of the traffic going across the network. We discovered that there were these two Linux devices that were um, on the network, and they were communicating via SSH with each other. And normally, if it's just a standard Linux server, that's not a very uncommon behavior because that's typically, you know, a system administrator going to another machine to see, you know, to check on, on another machine and perform some tasks from a remote location. As our system continued to learn about what the devices are, we discovered that these were Polycom HDX video conferencing systems. These are systems that are very common in a lot of uh, corporate boardrooms and conference rooms around the globe. And what we noticed is that um, that is really out of context. There's no reason for these two uh, Polycom systems to be uh, creating SSH connections, not only to themselves, but they had actually opened up hundreds of other SSH connections throughout the organization. And that's an extremely um, bad situation when you have hundreds of connections uh, that are being opened up from a single server or from a single device. 
And so upon further inspection, we learned that these devices, these polycom systems, were infected with four variants of the Mirai botnet. Um, and this was a very sophisticated um, modification to the Mirai. And it came out of the Eastern Bloc in Europe. And what we discovered there is not only did these guys um, infect these machines, but they actually had a complete global directory of every polycom system around the world that they had complete control of, meaning that they could turn on the camera at any time, they can see what's going on inside of a boardroom, and they could turn on the microphone um, all without the, uh, the people knowing that uh, this connection was taking place. And these people had the ability to eavesdrop on communications. They were selling this information out on the dark web um, and literally it's industrial espionage when you take a look at it. So um, we were able to get in touch with Polycom and we said, hey guys, here's a challenge that we're finding with your systems. Um, a patch was released, but as you all know, um, it takes time for IT organizations to patch systems. And so there may very well still be Polycom HDX systems out there uh, that are vulnerable to this or these um, uh, these botnets that were uh, that we discovered. So that's an area of again understanding not only all the devices but understanding the context of these devices. Um, some of the other things that we've discovered in working with customers, um, you know, smart cars or you know all these electric vehicles are coming you know coming into parking lots now. Um, and some guys are pretty clever. So in this particular instance, we found several te Tesla cars that were connected to a company's Wi-Fi access point and downloading, you know, the latest software for the Tesla vehicles. Um, and granted, you know, in this particular instance, um, all of these vehicles actually were part of the executive suites for, for the company. Um, but we brought this to the attention of IT. IT then had to go to the executive ranks and say, hey guys, um, connecting your vehicle to our corporate access points really is not within the scope of the acceptable use policy. Um, so they had to go and, and disconnect the vehicles from, from the access points. But it just goes to show the depth and breadth of what we can discover in organizations without, you know, having to have any sort of agent installed. And so that's always important to understand. We're doing all of this agent-less um, and it's, we're getting so much information, it's, it's absolutely astounding. Um, and then in another area, you know, where, where we were with another customer, we were able to get installed into the environment, again, looking at all the, the traffic and understanding um, what's going on uh, from a contextualized perspective. And we noticed that there is some anomalous behavior from within the data center. Um, we pointed it out to the customer. And what was interesting is this customer has a very robust uh, security budget and they had the next gen everything from firewall to endpoint protection to EDR solutions. Um, but all of these products missed what these uh, what this particular system was doing. And what we discovered is as we we're doing the, the uh, packet inspection and, and taking a look at the, at the payload of the, the packets across the network, we started to notice that they were all going out um, and then coming back into the environment again. And what it was, it was a Bitcoin mining operation that wound up inside the middle of a corporate data center. Um, these guys were pretty sophisticated. They loaded up a virtual machine in the VMware ESX uh, system, um, and it was there for almost a year and a half, and nobody detected anything was going wrong um, with this particular machine. Um, and again, because of the way that we operate and, and the inspections that we're doing, um, we discovered this, we brought it to the IT department's uh, attention, and they literally ended the meeting to rush to go take care of this uh, situation. They are a huge customer of ours now, and um, we're actually expanding our footprint with them on a global basis. So, again, there are many different situations that exist and many different types of threats that come into the environment. And the biggest issue that we run into in you know, as IT professionals and as security professionals, 
is that there's this daunting skills gap that exists in the workforce today. Um, depending on what, uh, what reports you read, between 1 million and 3 million um, security positions that are open uh, globally, and it's, it's causing problems for organizations because they can't fill those seats fast enough with people that have the proper skills around security. And even if they did have the proper skills, they don't have enough people to take care of remediation. And so when we talk with various organizations, we learn that while they have their security team, there's a low level of confidence that things will be caught in a timely fashion um, in order to prevent a significant exfiltration of data. And so, you know, if we peel back the layers of the onion of that a little bit further, we, you know, we see that the typical or the average time frame that somebody is in a network and doing nefarious activities, it's about 191 days before there's any sort of detection of them. And then you even have to kick off the remediation part and that itself can take some time as well. And so the challenge that we have um, within the organizations is we have a lot of human beings trying to address um, the onslaught of automated processes, you know, automated bad software uh, coming in and attacking us. And so the challenge that we have is we can't fight um, automation with just human um, skill alone. We actually have to bring in automation to fight automation. Um, and so when we take a look at this, um, this is where the Woot Cloud solution really comes in um, to the rescue for many, many organizations is because of this visibility that we have across the entire network, we can see things that are coming in through the firewalls and we can see everything that's traversing the network as well. So not only can we see north south traffic, but we also see the east west traffic. Um, and so what that allows us to do is it allows us to see all the infrastructure devices within an organization. That means we see all the network routers, the switches, the firewalls, uh, the NACs, anything that is associated with infrastructure to keep the IT infrastructure running, we see. We also see all of these devices that are coming into the environment. And what we do is all of that traffic gets pumped into our Woot Cloud hyper context platform, which then allows us to put together a very nice user dashboard or an executive dashboard showing the current health of our, you know, of this, of the, the environment. So we can show, you know, things from a risk perspective associated with IT risks, network risks and security operations risks. And along the way, we can develop an overall organizational risk score. So again, by taking a look at all of these devices and each device getting its own risk score associated with it, and having that all bubble up into the various buckets on how compliant these devices are with IT policy, we can really provide actionable insight for the IT organizations on what they need to do um, to protect themselves. The other thing that we can also do with this is auto enforcement um, at a granular device level. And what we mean by this is we can literally perform micro segmentation of the network at a device level. So remember all of that context that we're building about every device in the environment, whether it's managed or unmanaged, we can build um, a, a very nice policy rule on how the different devices should be managed based on over 300 different factors of the devices themselves. So we can detect when devices are behaving outside of the norm of that type of device, or even from a user uh, behavioral perspective, we can see when um, potential uh, user credentials might be uh, used on a device uh, to do bad things inside of an organization. So based on all these different parameters, we can do micro segmentation um, to isolate, isolate those devices and keep them away from you know, the, the core corporate assets now, which is all of the intellectual property that exists inside the network. And then finally, the other thing that uh, this executive dashboard helps um, with is 
to really help optimize the resource allocation inside of the organization. Do you have the right number of folks? Are they working on the right, um, you know, the, the right uh, technologies? Do they, you know, do they need more capabilities? You can glean all of this from the executive dashboard. But what's more important about all of this is with the WooCloud solution, what we're doing is really helping to fill that void in, um, in that human personnel arena in the sense that um, with those 1 million to 3 million uh, open positions out there, we can actually bring automation to the point where our platform can help uh, organizations reduce their threat hunting by well over 70% um, and improve their remediation time, you know, by a factor of 3x. But the most critical factor here is what we call the FTE service factor. This is the, the full time equivalent service factor or, you know, the number of people that um, we can basically add, you know, virtual people that we can add um, to your security team with a um, with the WooCloud solution, it basically adds the factor of 1.4 people per site per shift. Imagine what that does now, right? This solution is now acting as yet another security operations person or a security uh, person on your IT staff to help address the threats that are in the organization. And we're grabbing all of this information from our existing install base um, and understanding how they're operating. So this is highly actionable um, data that you can take back and have conversations with your uh, CISOs and CIOs to talk about, you know, how do we address this, this big threat and security out there? And so if I paint the standard picture of what a zero trust environment looks like today, you can see all of the different technologies that have most likely been deployed within your organization. And they address a lot of different things. You know, there are different control points um, for the, you know, for the endpoints. So things like the laptops and the edge devices, um, you know, you have your endpoint security solutions out there. Um, you have DLP and encryption uh, control points. You have your firewalls and so forth. But the challenge along with all of these is they all require co special configuration in order to function properly. I can't tell you the number of devices or the number of alerts that we're seeing coming through uh, customers' firewalls for things that should be blocked but haven't been blocked because the firewall itself either hasn't been updated with its rule set or it's completely misconfigured. So what we do is we bring in the WooCloud solution to add in you know the ability to add additional eyes on the network and we can also address those remote offices really well because in most cases those remote branches don't tend to have security personnel um, at them so when you have the WooCloud uh, hyper context platform at those facilities it's acting as your security person and it's starting to perform security automation to ensure that the network is always safe now, again, one aspect of security is protecting things from the cyber uh, world, so everything coming across the network, but you also have to protect yourself from, from the inside, things that are entering your environment on a daily basis, such as all these uh, very highly mobile smart devices. Okay. So that's really how we can fit into this architecture. We're not here to replace anything. We are really here to help augment um, what you have in your environment. And so, as I mentioned, we are an artificial intelligence machine learning platform. Um, and by unlocking um, the power of our engine, what we're doing here is we're introducing into your environment our hypercontext platform. And as I mentioned, it, it measures devices by over 300 different parameters. Um, and it also helps to de determine the authenticity of devices which then leads into what we call our device true ID, which basically gives a fingerprint to every device that's out there. So what we can absolutely determine is whether a new device coming in is attempting to spoof an existing uh, device in your environment, or if it's trying to pretend that it's a different device than what it really is.
So um, with our uh, true um, ID capability, um, you can rest assured that your access points are not being spoofed. You can rest assured that when a device comes in and says that it's a Samsung smartphone belonging to the CEO, it truly is the Samsung smartphone that's in the CEO's briefcase or backpack, depending um, how progressive the, uh, the CEO is in this case. But what's even more, uh, in power, uh, more important about all this is how it relates into your security operations and IT operations and by taking all of this information that we get from the um, AI and ML platform is we have that ability to do threat correlation across not only the network attached and Wi-Fi devices that, that you guys are aware of, but we can see across the entire radio frequency spectrum to pick up on things such as um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, um, in order to see what other vulnerabilities might be walking or lurking um, in your environment. Um, we perform micro segmentation, um, you know, on a device level. And so what this really means is we can help you guys automate the movement of devices um, just based on parameters and violations of, of various policies. Um, and, and we send those instructions literally down to the NAC um, or if you guys use something like Juniper Mist access points, we can do this at the access point as well. So we can send instructions to the access point um, to basically perform this micro segmentation. What's even more um, impressive about all of this is that this is a continuous dynamic process. So that means we are monitoring devices on a regular basis based on everything that they're doing and if they ever fall out of uh, the boundaries of what a good behavior is for the device, um, our system will automatically um, enforce, you know, or kick off the orchestration or the automation for um, doing that micro segmentation of that device. So that means that you, as the network security person, you do not need to go out and change the access control lists of your NAC system will take care of that all automatically. So if you're using Aruba uh, ClearPass, if you're using Cisco ICE, um, I already mentioned Juniper Mist. Um, if you're using uh, uh, technologies from uh, Arista, we have integrations with all of those platforms to take care of this automation for you. And as you guys all know, it's so much faster for a machine to send an instruction for then for us to try to type it. And I'm not the greatest typist anymore either. Um, I tend to fat finger a lot of commands, so I have to hit the backspace a lot. Um, in the time that it took me to explain this to you guys, our system could have easily reconfigured the network for you um, instantly. And then what's even more um, impressive about the overall solution is by seeing all of these devices in the environment, we can literally give a complete view of all assets in the environment. And so a lot of organizations we know are struggling with asset management uh, solutions out there. So whether you're using ServiceNow or Umnitsa or just a bunch of Excel spreadsheets, the WooCloud HyperContext platform can integrate with all of those um, to provide a completeness of view of every device. So whether it's a smartphone, whether it's a, a tablet, whether it's the HVAC control unit, you know, the smart HVAC control units um, or IP based cameras for security or badge readers or door locks, anything that is, has the ability to communicate in, within your environment, um, we will see and we can actually log as part of the asset management system. And then within that, you have the ability to highlight those items that are, um, managed by the organization and then those things that are unmanaged. Um, but it's just as important to understand what's unmanaged um, just so that you can always monitor to make sure those things aren't uh, performing uh, bad behavior inside the environment. So, as I mentioned before, um, we are not here to replace any technology. We can literally augment everything that you have inside of your environment. We have integrations with SIM platforms such as Splunk and Logarithm and FireEye where we can receive all of the SIM data coming in. 
we can enrich it in our AI and ML platform. We do advanced correlation uh, work with it. And then what we do is we send back a deduplicated list of items that need to be addressed immediately. So what we're doing is we're helping to pinpoint the needle in the haystack that's the threat to your organization versus everything else that might just be noise. Okay, we talked about the asset uh, system already on the previous slide, um, but really the idea here is, you know, we can um, bring those asset databases to 100% completeness. Um, with the firewalls, we have integrations with Palo Alto and other firewall uh, companies out there so that we can help uh, perform the um, automation of introducing new rules to the firewall um, as needed. So these are, these are really key things that you would need um, to continue to fortify your security aspect of things. Um, if we take a look at risk and vulnerability assessments, um, look, out on the marketplace, there are a lot of different solutions that perform um, different types of vulnerability scans. Some of them, some of those solutions are very expensive and many organizations only use them on very core parts of the network. With our solution, we have a, a vulnerability scanning capability. Um, the cost of our solution is low enough to where you can actually have vulnerability scanning performed on every device that's inside of your environment. So there's absolutely no reason to say that you have um, vulnerable laptops out there because you didn't have the licenses. Um, with our solution set, we can perform that vulnerability scanning and we can provide reports on every device that you have and you understand exactly what needs to be addressed. I talked about NAC earlier uh, or network access control systems. In this environment, um, this is the NAC is literally becomes the enforcement engine for our policies. So literally we can tell the NAC, perform the following actions for these devices, um, and the NAC will go ahead and, and enforce those policies. It's a very sophisticated uh, solution, very tight integrations, um, and we are impressing a lot of organizations because we've been able to bring to light the challenges that they've had with their NAC, well, they've actually told us what their challenges have been, but what we've been able to do is bring to light the solution on how to dynamically uh, reconfigure the NAC uh, rules so that the environment is always protected. Um, we're talking with large financial services companies, a um, lot of large uh, technology companies. Um, think about uh, manufacturing and retail. These are all areas where, you know, there there's a lot of IP out there that people want to steal, we can help and ensure that all that data is protected. Okay, and as I mentioned, even on the access points, um, we have really, really nice integrations um, with Juniper Mist, um, as well as other access point vendors. Um, and so with this, when you add Root Cloud into your ecosystem of security products, you are literally supercharging your existing investment. Um, we can help you get closer to 100% utilization of your security platforms versus the typical 40% that you're accomplishing today. So with that, I'm just going to share some next steps with you, some things that I'd like to invite you guys um, to take into consideration. We do offer the ability to do a uh, smart device risk assessment in your, in your environment. And what we would do is um, run this for roughly about three weeks. Um, and at the end of that period, um, you will get a really nice report that highlights everything that we discovered inside of the environment and gives you a very actionable um, list of things to do in order to fortify your, your environment. And then, as I mentioned, you know, we could do this as a proof of concept or a proof of value. Um, so that you can see how all of this works inside of your environment. Um, and, you know, together with CCSI, we are happy to, to roll this out um, as part of the services offering that, that they bring to, to you guys as customers. So with that, I am going to leave my contact information up there if you have any questions. Um, you can always give me a quick call on my mobile number. I'm always available shoot me an email or reach out to everybody that uh, 
feel free to reach out to CCSI for questions as well. So if anybody has any questions, um, Jessica, if you want to open up the mic, we can open it up for questions. Okay, so I guess at the moment, the it doesn't look like there are any questions. So Jessica, um, if you like, we can wrap this one up unless you have some parting uh, comments for those that attended. Uh, thank you everyone who uh, attended and uh, if you'd like any more information, please feel free to reach out to Roland or you can check out CCSI's website at www.ccsinet.com. Thank you again and have a fantastic afternoon.